And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Upon a Fable. Now this preview of this game on Kickstarter, uh, Upon a Fable is a game in which players are telling stories or, or exploring stories or being part of stories, but the game itself is not actually a storytelling game. It's a what we would call a worker placement game where you are putting out things to get resources to, to do other things. Now that's a simplification of how the game works, so let me show you and then we'll be back. As with all my previews, I want to remind you that everything you see here is in prototype form, and this is just to show you how to play the game. I'm going to be using a lot of my own pieces here to demonstrate the game. Uh, this is some artwork of what the actual pieces are going to look like, and there's a way to upgrade pieces to wooden pieces in the Kickstarter campaign itself. Now what players are attempting to do in this game to tell the best story that they can is they're trying to get points. And this card here is going to show you at the end of the game, depending on how much magic, love, honor, followers, and castles, ever after cards, small realms, large and epic realms, will show you how many points you get. So for example, at the end of the game, if you have five honor, then you're going to get three points. And so uh, each of them is, has a different value of it, while each large realm and epic realm give two and three points. And there's a few other ways to get points, but that's the majority of the way to get points. There are nine stories in the game. Each story is split. There's the first book of tales, the second book, the third book. And each one of those, at the beginning of the story, the first thing you'll do is you'll turn that over. And what that means is, essentially, players are going to have a certain number of fables. Think of fables in a sense as workers that you can put out or, or something that you put out. You get one for each realm that you have. At the beginning of the game, each player has a home realm. This is their player board and a spot to keep the different resources that they get. And each realm can support one fable. And they're going to send this fable out to one of these spots. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to add some of these spots are going to get resources. For example, this gets one magic, this gets two magic, this gets one love, this gets one honor, and that gets one follower. And on a player's turn, they can take a fable and put it in a spot and take all the resources from that spot. They can also take this here to play a card from their hand, to draw another card to their hand, to be the starting player for next round, otherwise starting player stays the same, to convert a wonder. All these resources are called wonders, so I can change one thing into one other thing, or to add a small realm. Now, adding a small realm can be important because you want to have more fables to put out as the turns go by. And so if I have the proper resources, for example, this small realm that I just added needs two love. I need to play two love to get this small realm on the board. But once I do, I will immediately have another fable that I can use. And you can see here that you have room for six of these. Now, as the game progresses, more spaces will be triggered. Here's a spot to add a realm or upgrade a realm. Here's three different resources. By the way, if no one takes resources on a turn, those resources will be added. And also, each space that no one goes to has a magic thrown on it from turn to turn. But anyhow, you can upgrade a realm. So any small realm can be upgraded into a larger realm. So let's say I use the upgrade realm thing. I can upgrade this small realm to a large realm by paying a follower and a love token. And then each turn of the game, if the player at right has more magic than me, I can take one from that player. But each large realm has special abilities that will happen during one of the phases of the game. And you can upgrade a large realm to an epic realm. This would give me two love every story. And so as the game progresses, there's going to be more and more options and as the players go, because there's nine of these that are going to become available. The last six of them will either have a curse or a blessing. The curse usually will hurt all the players, and the blessing will usually help a player who might not be doing as well as everybody else. You resolve that first before turning over the new space. And you can see here you get castles, another place to upgrade your realm, change a wonder to one of the following groups, draw two cards and play a card, ignore a wonder for each card you play, and three magic. So there's a lot of different options. And this board here is only for the three to four player game. There's 12 spaces on the five to six player game. So, a turn will work. You turn this over, you replenish the things that are on the board. 
If you have epic or large realms, you get to take the actions on those realms. Then everyone will get dealt a hand of fate. Everyone will start with some cards, but each turn you get past three cards. You will look at those cards. You will pick one to keep yourself and pass the other two. It's one to the player on your left and one to the player on your right. Then players are going to take turns in turn order, putting out their fables on the board and taking the associated stuff or the associated action. Then players have a chance to play cards from their hand. Now there are two types of cards that they can play. There are dream cards. These are one-time use cards. They, all have a co they, they don't always have a cost, but this one happens to cost two magic. Play a small realm from your hand for no cost. Or this one has no cost, but it says if you give each player one magic, you gain two followers. Or this one, gain one follower, everyone else gets a magic. There are also Ever After cards, which will stay in front of you because they're worth points at the end of the game, but they also give you special ability. When I upgrade to a large epic realm, I can ignore a wonder requirement. Or whenever another player takes one or more love from the storyboard, you gain one honor as well. And so each of these Ever Afters, not only, I mean, dreams are one-time use and they can be powerful, while an Ever After is something that can stay in effect for the whole game. So players will have a chance to play one of those. Each, you can play more by going on to different spots on the board as the game progresses. And then you need to empower your realms every third turn. After each book, one, two, and three, after these stories here, players have to pay one magic for each small realm, two magic for large realms, and three magic for the uh, epic realms. If they cannot, they'll put a sleep token on and they won't be able to use that worker next turn. And if it happens at the end of the game, then they're actually gonna lose some other resources. That's basically it for a turn. You'll start another turn, you'll put them out, and you'll keep going until we get to the end of the game where you'll count up the different resources and the different cards that you have, and whoever has the most points is the winner. As I went through and played this, the, the game itself, the, the theme is certainly a unique one, one that I don't know that I've seen before with dreams and uh, once upon a time and ever after and having this story feel to it, but the gameplay itself, it, it reminded me an awful lot like the... Um, uh, a family version of Agricola. Uh, what you're doing in this game is you're trying to get as many resources as you can. So for the first several turns, you're trying to set up kind of an engine to get more realms so you have more more fables to put out, to uh, get Ever After cards that give you cool special abilities so that you can get more resources and to collect the resources. The problem is you're spending resources as the game goes by, but those resources are worth points. So you have to kind of make the decision, at what point during the game do you really stop trying to build up your engine, so to speak, and just start playing uh, cards uh, and gathering resources as quickly as you can. Uh, Sometimes you, you, you sit there and go, do I need to waste a fable on that first player marker? But I really need to go next. And since all the players aren't going to be able to put out realms each turn, that's going to be a hotly contested space. But if you don't get it, you have the consolation prize and maybe grabbing a lot of resources. So there's, there's several things. There's interactive cards that let you steal some stuff from other players. There are the cards that I showed you. If, I, if you have more than me, I can take one from you as long as I have this in practice. And so you're constantly watching what the other players do, and there's a lot going on. Now, it didn't look that spectacular with my prototype, but the, the pieces, you'll have to check them out on the Kickstarter in a second, really do look pretty good, especially the wooden upgraded token set. So in just a moment, we're going to show you the Kickstarter link if you'd like to back this project upon a fable. The gameplay, I should mention before we get to it, the gameplay itself, probably an hour to 90 minutes. I mean, a little bit slower the first time you go through, but there's only nine turns in the game, and while each turn is progressively longer, because there's more fables to put on, uh, there's not a whole lot of extraneous stuff getting in the way, so it's one that you can play through quickly and thoroughly, upon a fable. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.